So today I'm going to show you how to break down a salmon. This is going to go through the steps of taking the skin off, cutting it into fillets, removing the bones, and eventually we're even going to cook it. Bon appetit. So I've got some Columbia River uh, Wild Spring Chinook. Um, these average about uh, anywhere from 8 to 14 pound fish. This is one side. This is about a 7 pound side. Um, this fish has come in. It looks beautiful. It's just been caught. Um, the skin is on and the bones are intact. So I'm going to show you right now how we get the skin off, the bones out, and clean it up a little bit. First thing you want to do is remove some of this belly fat because if you think about how this is going to end up, you're going to want to be able to cook this evenly. And this thin layer here is going to take a lot longer to cook. The knife that we're going to be filleting this with should be at least as long as the fish is wide, as you can kind of see here. And we're just going to trim this up and make a nice even cut. And for me, I'd save this. This can be easily eaten later, uh, put into a soup or a chowder, but definitely is not going to be waste. There's a lot of good fat here. You can see where um, the fish purveyor, the fish monger, as we like to call them, um, as they were cutting the fish, they left some of that bone from the cartilage here. And we're just going to use our bony knife in about a 30 degree angle. What this is going to allow us to do is have a cleaner cut later. Sometimes you might order fish in a restaurant and see some of this on there. It's just one more thing for the guest to have to deal with, and we want to make this a little bit more seamless for them. So I'm just trimming that ever so well. We want to inspect the fish. If you're looking at it, you can see it's nice and clean. There are no dimples in the meat. Um, there's no blemishes on the skin. We're going to come in at the bottom of the tail, right around here. And I'm going to just cut through a little bit of that meat until I feel the skin. And you can kind of just peek as you go. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll just move my board a moment. You can kind of just see where that tail piece is meeting the skin. So coming from this angle again, I get a better angle for the camera shot. And we're going to come in, and I've got about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to follow this all the way down. You can see the knife is plenty longer than the skin, which really works out well. It gives me a little rotation. Flip that fish over and we've skinned that beautifully. Okay, needle nose tweezers work really well. Um, these are a pair that I've picked up. These are global, they're great. And what we wanna do, since the salmon filet kinda works from the tail towards the head, and it ridges back that way, we know the bones are coming at an angle towards the tail. So I can just start to feel for them. And what I like to do is to find the first bone and just feather it back to expose them. And they all just kinda stand up like little soldiers and we're going to go ahead and extract our first one. And you want to pull the bones out the way they're in. So they're at a slight angle. We're going to pull them out just like that. And I grab them with my tweezers. And once I get a hold of them, I'm just going to gently massage it back and forth. You want to take your time. You want to goal here is not to dig too deep into the meat. That's looking just beautiful. And you know, if you leave one or two in here, the nice thing about it is when you actually cut your steaks, You'll be able, you'll cut one, you'll, if you cut through a bone, you'll be able to recover that on either side of the fillet. Well, you want to get as much of these out as possible. When it comes in, you want to store your fish in the ice that it came in on. It should be stored in a self-draining container so it's not sitting in ice water. Um, the reason you don't want to add new ice or change the ice is because usually what happens at that time is you're handling the fish a little bit too much, and the more you handle the fish, the more it begins to degrade. All right. So we have removed all the bones. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take the tail off right above where the dorsal fin was. And you can see where the fish begins to almost recede and, and come to a tail right here. That's where all the exercise is happening on the fish. So it may seem like a huge waste to you watching to take that off. It is still good eating, but it's not going to get wasted. This is better for a chowder or a chipino or something like that. But if you're going to grill it and the fish is going to be the star of the plate, you want to go ahead and remove that. So well, this will be used, but for something else. Now we have two options. At this point, we can cut a nice steak, and I like to use the back of my knife without cutting into the meat, and just kind of mark how big I want to go here and see how many I can portion off. I can also cut it down the center and then do what's known as a block cut, which is what I'm going to do. Let me do one of each so you can see. First one is just your traditional uh, fillet of salmon, and that's a nice straight cut. I could also come in at a slight angle and give me a bias cut, and that's about a six ounce piece of fish. Looks beautiful, it's been fully filleted. The other thing we can do, which is my preference, is I'm going to turn the fish to make it more amiable, and I'm going to cut it right down where that center bone was. Leaving me two good pieces. 
Now I'm going to do what's known as a block cut. And a block cut is I'm going to cut these around four to six ounces. And let me just mark one more and one more there. And the beautiful thing about a block cut is these will cook more evenly than, say, this filet. Because you can see on the filet, you've got the thicker piece, and then you get down to that belly. That's going to cook a little faster than the back of the fish. And I want to cook these at an even rate. So even though I'm going to also block cut that belly, and one more, I can sear these and have them going in two different pans. And they have two different cooking times. Okay, to recap, buy a fish that's 24 to 48 hours fresh, use a damp towel to blot it dry and get off those, those rogue scales, and get it right into the saute pan. Work with it fast and enjoy the process. Bon appetit.